Hey everyone, welcome to another video. If this is your first time here, thank you so much for clicking on the thumbnail. If you've been to these parts before, I thank you even more for coming back. From my last video about the Mac Mini M1, which Apple just released, I had a lot of questions about how DaVinci Resolve handles H.265 10-bit footage, 4K obviously. Um, does it handle it just as well as Final Cut did in the last video? Well, let's find out. Let's waste no time and let's dive straight into the edit suite. Okay, so in the edit suite, we're using DaVinci Resolve 17. Now, I must say I'm primarily a Final Cut user. I'm just learning DaVinci Resolve. So if I do anything in a weird way in the next few minutes, don't blast me in the comments. Just obviously leave a nice comment telling me how I can change my editing style within DaVinci Resolve or any tips and tricks that may help me uh, learn quicker how it all works. But for now, I took some shots earlier on my Lumix S5, which I've been loaned for a couple of weeks. So I'm obviously working with the codecs that are available on that camera and the frame rates and everything. Um, so we've got some here. We're going to bring that in. And just to let you know, I'm editing this off an external SSD, a Samsung T5 SSD, because um, a few of you asked whether it bottlenecks a bit using an external SSD. So we're gonna find that out right now. So these clips that I've put in, they are, they are 25 frames a second. They're 422, 10-bit, but they're only H.264. I say only H.264. But, so that's what we're gonna be using for this first one. So let's take these clips and just whack them straight in the timeline. And then we'll go for the moment of truth of playing this back and see if there's any frames dropping or anything. So we don't seem to have any frames dropping right now. It seems pretty fluid to me. I'll just skip ahead, see if we get any weird weirdness. No, nope. seems to go through, it, be going through it lovely. I'm, you know, I'm scrolling the timeline, it's not affecting it. And let's just have a look at a couple more clips. Yep, seems fine. Playing perfectly, isn't it? Right, let's export this and see what time we get for exporting it. So uh, we need to go to export. And then I'm just gonna do basic export of this. So we're just gonna go for the YouTube function, Ultra HD, Frame Rate 25, and then Video Codec H264. And we'll save this on the SSD. So, um, we'll just call it H264 SSD and we'll save that. And then we'll add to the render queue and let's see how long it takes. So we're coming to the end now, it's at 91%. Um, and we'll see what time that took. So it's about a two minute clip, two minutes 16. So let's see how long that took to render out. So it's two minutes, 18 seconds to render this 422 10-bit H264 clip. Okay, so now we've got a new project and this is gonna be H265. Um, so we're just gonna grab those files. So the difference in these files from the last ones is, um, let's pick one. So the difference is this is now 50 frames per second. It's 10 bit H265, but it's only 420, not 422. So that's the only, that's the difference between the last one. The last one was H264, 422. This is H265, 420. So let's put these in the timeline and see what we get. And we'll go for a playback. Again, plays absolutely smoothly no drop frames whatsoever looking lush look at that branch of a tree artwork at its finest yep just skipping through the timeline scrubbing along's fine skip to the end no problem at all absolutely no problem at all and that's off an external ssd uh, let's just export this so we get another kind of test of speed of it. So we change the codec this time to H265. 
We'll call this H265 SSD. We'll place that on the SSD. There we go. Add to the render queue and let's go. So that was super quick, we're up to 90% already. This is a one minute 44 clip. And that is just exported in 52 seconds for the H265 10 bit 420. Okay, so we've got another new project up. This is H264 again, 422, but this time it's the internal SSD. So this is coming straight from the Mac mini and no external SSD. So we'll see if there's any difference in speed. Um, with this. So we'll grab the original files again, put them into the media pool. Again, just to show you, it's uh, 422 10-bit 4K, 25 frames a second, H264 codec. So we'll put them in the timeline again. So remember, this is coming straight off the, um, the Mac Mini. Just move that to the start to make it a fair test. And let's see how this plays back. Oh, so we've got a few, yeah, we're getting a few little drop frames. Oh, sorted itself out now. Yeah, we seem to be fine now. Let's go ahead. So yeah, it seems pretty fine from there on. Oh no, got a little, oh no, that was the end of the clip. I'll let them off. I'll let Da Vinci resolve off in the Mac Mini. But yeah, it seems it seems it's just that initial little couple of seconds, and it sorts itself out. Which, for a seven hundred quid computer, are you going to be bothered about that? Probably not. That it takes a couple of seconds before it starts ramping up. Okay, cool. Let's export this and see what we get. So we'll call this H264 internal 4K, 25, H264, yep. Uh, we just put, we'll just put this on the desktop. That's our render queue and let's go. So yep, we're coming to the end again, 92, 93%, 94. We'll see what time that comes up with. So that was two minutes 17. So I think it's, was it slightly quicker than the last one? I can't remember, we'll check that. But yeah, so around the same, I would say. Obviously we just had that little stutter at the start during the editing. And now we'll just do the final one on the internal hard drive with the Mac Mini with the H265 footage. We've got a final project set up and I'm going to bring in the H265 footage, the same as before. I'm going to put that in the media pool, don't change. So again, just to show you, just to remind you, this is H265 footage. It's 10 bit 4K, 50 frames per second, but it's only 420 codec, not 422, like the H264. So just bring these in and see what the playback's like. Remember, it started a bit on the last one with the H.264, so let's see, see how this goes. No stuttering at all. Easy playback. Looks perfect. Excellent, then let's, let's export this and see see what we get from this. Uh, so we'll call that H265 internal. Let's add it to the render queue and let's render it out. And we're up to 90%, super quick again with the H.265 footage and that took just 50 seconds. So that is super, super quick. 
So this was just a basic kind of show and tell essentially of what the Mac Mini can do with H.265 footage, 10 bit, H.264 footage, 10 bit, um, both 4KK, uh, 420 and 422. Obviously this is complete like baseline. There's loads more you could do. You could have effects and colors and that. Um, potentially got a commercial job at the end of the week. If you'd like me to edit that fully on DaVinci Resolve, which will have color grading and everything to see how it works out, then I'm happy to do that. I'll, I'll record the screen as I edit and put it together for you for a video. So leave a comment below if you want me to do that. Ultimately, like there may be ways, say I'm quite new to DaVinci Resolve, so there may be ways that you know you can speed up how it plays back and everything and that. But to be honest, for £700 or $700 for this Mac Mini M1, you cannot complain at its performance in a third party program like DaVinci Resolve. It just, it, it just works. Like you've got to keep things in perspective that this is a, a £700 or $700 machine and it's keeping up with machines that come out a year ago that are thousands of pounds worth more. So is this worth getting? I definitely think so. Um, it's not obviously going to be a long-term computer solution, but it's going to get you over the next six months to a year when before the new, hopefully, M2s come out and, and the MacBook Pros and whatnot. Um, if you've got this far, thank you so much for listening this far and taking time out of your day to hear me ramble. If you did like this video then it'd be great if you could subscribe and obviously hit the like button if you subscribe then hopefully that will lead to me earning money from youtube and finally being able to feed my kids and get them christmas presents if you don't want that laying on your conscience that my kids aren't able to eat then please subscribe and like the video i'll leave that thought with you um, and i'll be back next time leave some comments below let me know what other videos you want me to do um, if you've got any questions i'll i'll be in the comments answering questions but that's it for now and I'll see you again next time. Cheers.